Other than artifacts, instants and sorceries are my favorite card type. In Commander, Spellslinger might be one of the most flexible and fun archetypes to play. Before I gush about Spellslinger for 5-10 to 10 minutes, if you like videos like this, consider subscribing to see more. Alright, so what is a Spellslinger deck? The short answer is it's a deck that uses instants and sorceries to generate value for their win. Spellslinger is primarily best in blue, though red and black have some decent options as well, and you can really build it in any color combination. There are instants and sorceries in every color, after all. Here are some common Spellslinger cards to give you an idea of what it is. Archmage Emeritus and Stormkill Artist. Both of these have Magecraft, so they give you value every time you cast or copy an instant or sorcery. To get the most out of these cards, you want to cast many instants and sorceries. So this means you want cheap spells and less massive ones. You might want some high cost finishers like Expropriator, Mizix's Mastery, but a Spellslinger deck really can take advantage of cantrips. A cantrip is a 1 or 0 mana card that replaces itself, usually by drawing a card. Normally, I'm not a huge fan of cantrips in my casual commander decks because they don't provide card advantage, so I don't play too many of them. But with these Magecraft cards, maxing out with a bunch of cantrips is pretty good. If you play a card like Gataxian Probe with a Stormkill Artist, it essentially costs negative one mana and will draw you two cards with the Archmage in play. And there are lots of cantrips that have other utility as well. Cremate is Graveyard Hate that draws a card, and Expedite giving haste can be really useful. Another way to cast multiple spells in a turn or just over the course of the game is with cost reducers. Primal Amulet is probably the best one. It helps you cast multiple spells, plus the backside is a really great way to double up on a finisher in the late game. Alright, so you have cantrips, big value spells, and cost reducers, but how do you actually win? Now this depends on where you want to take the deck. You could go for a storm finish where you try and cast many, many spells in one turn with something like Aetherflux Reservoir or Tendrils of Agony to finish off the table. You can also win with creatures. Cards like Tolerand or Monastery Mentor can turn a ton of spells into a lot of creatures. Prowess creatures in general can be really scary with a handful of instants. You attack with what might be a 3-2, but then instant, 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 and suddenly it's huge. Or you could just top out with big spells and try to copy them. Getting multiple copies of Bribery, Expropriate, Breach the Multiverse can take down the whole table. Personally, that's my favorite way to build Spellslinger decks. I love going over the top with crazy big instants and sorceries. Now how do you combat a Spellslinger deck? What are their weaknesses? Well honestly just pressuring them. Many spell oriented decks need a critical mass of value cards to get the ball rolling. Now once they get going, it's not hard for a strong Spellsinger deck to overwhelm the table, but if you hit their first value piece early and then put some power on the board, spell focused decks can get rolled over. If you're struggling with people attacking you early as a Spellsinger deck, maybe add a few Pillow Fort cards to try and stem some of the bleeding. Here are some ideas for Spellslinger commanders that I think are underrated. Octavia Living Thesis. Ward 8 makes this card really hard to hit. And if you fill your deck with cards that make creatures when they cast spells like Tolerand, you can make a huge board of 8-8 flyers that slam in for tons of damage. And since she's in blue, you get access to all of the best cantrips. Throw in something like High Tide for huge burst of mana, and maybe an extra turn spell or two, and you have a pretty powerful deck. If you want to try Storm, maybe you could go with Rosnacht, Heir of Ragrah. Using red cantrips that target a creature and skull clamp, you can churn through your deck really fast. Play a mana generator like Bergy or Urbrask, and you could get a storm count of 10 plus easily. Then cast Ignite Memories to knock your opponents out. You could also just use Bergy or Urbrask as your storm commander in mono red. I just think Rosnacht is cool. Lastly, a commander that I played for quite a while, Toshiro Umazawa, is a great Spellslinger commander that I don't think gets enough love. When an opponent's creature dies, you can cast an instant from your graveyard. Not for free, but it's card advantage. So early game, you cast some kill spells, and then later, when you cast your commander, one kill spell lets you chain through a bunch of instants in your graveyard. As for finishers, there are great ones, like Sphinx Bone Wand, which can really scale up in damage if left out for a turn or two, or Rise of the Dark Realms to take advantage of all the stuff you killed all game. So how powerful are Spellslinger decks overall? I think they're usually on the strong side. A lot of them can snowball out of control when they have a few value synergy pieces in play, and you can quickly become the arch enemy. Plus, getting extra value from counter spells or removal is always good. 
Now, I think if you play a non-blue Spellslinger deck, the power level is probably going to be a little bit less because blue is just the best with instants. And I think you can make pretty decent mid or low power Spellslinger decks if you try and spice it up and go for something outside the normal color pie. In terms of budget, Spellslinger decks can be built for pretty cheap. Many decks want a critical mass of cheap spells. Cantrips like Sleight of Hand, Brainstorm, Opt are all pretty cheap cards. And so are a lot of the Rituals. Dark Rituals have been reprinted tons of times. There's a bunch of red ones that are pretty cheap too. In fact, these have been reprinted so many times that you might own a bunch of cards that work well in a Spellslinger deck already. So that's my little rant about Spellslinger decks in Commander. But I've only just scratched the surface of the different types of Spellslinger decks you could make. There's so many offshoots and variants, so let me know your favorites in the comments below. And any recommendations for building a spell deck in Commander. And hopefully I've convinced at least a few people out there to try a Spellslinger deck out for themselves. If I have, let me know about it in the comments below. Thank you so very much for watching. Subscribe for more.